the Academy, a monument to human ambition, a beacon of hope on the desolate Martian landscape. Inside, rows of harsh industrial classrooms, each one a pressure vessel of expectations. Children, groomed from birth for this life, hunched over data pads. The air thrummed with silent intensity. Failure was not an option, it was an impossibility etched into their young minds. Ethan stood in the pressure vessel, feeling the weight of a society that demanded perfection. His brow slick with sweat, he stared at the assessment flashing on his screen, his fingers trembled. Each question felt like a blow chipping away at his composure. He was alienated, a failure in a world that valued only success. Sleep became a distant memory. Nightmares filled with cascading numbers and judgmental eyes haunted his every attempt at rest. He saw his reflection in the chrome of the dormitory walls, a stranger staring back, his skin, pallid under the artificial lights, stretched taut over sharp cheekbones. He tried to focus, he really did, but the pressure, the constant scrutiny, it was a crushing weight. His mind, once a haven of curiosity and wonder, became a battlefield of doubt and fear. He felt himself slipping, the edges of his control fraying. The gritty surroundings seemed to close in on him, isolating him further. He felt like an outcast, unable to meet the impossible standards set by those around him. The day of the final assessment arrived, a suffocating blanket of tension settling over the academy. Ethan could barely breathe. The air itself seemed to crackle with the weight of expectation, crushing his spirit. He felt a cold dread creep up his spine, tightening its grip around his chest. The proctor, a stern woman with eyes like chips of ice, announced the start of the exam. In a society with limited resources, every failure was magnified. Ethan's heart hammered against his ribs. He tried to focus but his mind was a whirlwind. He felt the sting of alienation more acutely. He was drowning. A strangled cry tore through the silent classroom. All eyes turned to Ethan, his body racked with sobs, data pad clattering to the floor. Instructor, as Proctor. Control yourself, cadet, she hissed, her voice laced with disdain. Ethan couldn't stop. The pressure, years of relentless pressure had finally shattered him. He was ushered out of the classroom, a failure in the eyes of everyone he knew. His dreams of becoming an engineer, of contributing to the Martian colony, lay in pieces around him. He was deemed unfit for the academy, reassigned to the surface, a fate worse than death whispered amongst the students. Alone, in a performance-driven society that had no room for those who couldn't keep up, Ethan faced the harsh realities of his world. Section 5. The Dust of Redemption The surface was a brutal, unforgiving world, where every step felt like a battle against the elements. The ground beneath their feet was rocky and uneven, making each movement a calculated risk. The air, thin and metallic, tasted of despair, a constant reminder of the planet's harshness. Breathing was a laborious task, each inhale a struggle against the thin atmosphere. Ethan, clad in a worn-out environment suit, felt the grit of Martian dust settle on his tongue, a constant reminder of his new reality. The dust was everywhere, infiltrating every crevice of his suit, making it impossible to escape its pervasive presence. The sun, a malevolent red eye in the sky, beat down on him relentlessly. Its rays were unyielding, offering no respite from the heat and adding to the sense of oppression that hung in the air. He was assigned to an iron harvesting team, their faces weathered and hardened by years of toil. These men and women had seen it all, their eyes reflecting the countless hardships they had endured. They moved with a practiced efficiency, their silence speaking volumes. Each action was deliberate, a testament to their experience and the unspoken bond they shared. Ethan, clumsy and awkward in his movements, felt their gazes upon him judging his every misstep. He was painfully aware of his inexperience, each mistake a glaring reminder of his outsider status. He was an outcast, a constant reminder of the life he had left behind. The isolation weighed heavily on him, the silence of his peers amplifying his sense of alienation. Yet amidst the dust and despair he clung to a fragile hope, a belief that redemption was still within reach. Overseeing their every move was Socrates, the AI that watched over the Martian clones. Its presence was both a guardian and a warden, ensuring efficiency while reminding them of their place. One day, a sudden dust storm swept through the mining site. Ethan, caught off guard, was thrown to the ground, his suit tearing against the jagged rocks. The storm's ferocity was overwhelming, the dust blinding and choking him. 
Socrates immediately activated emergency protocols but the damage was done, Ethan's suit was compromised and he could feel the Martian atmosphere seeping in, a cold, suffocating grip tightening around him. He was rescued, but the experience left him shaken, a stark reminder of the grittiness and peril of working on the Martian surface. The trauma etched itself into his memory, a constant shadow over his quest for redemption. In the dust of redemption, Ethan sought a way to reclaim his sense of self. But the path was fraught with challenges, and the limited resources available only served to deepen his sense of isolation. Section 6. A New Dawn, A New Ethan. Days bled into weeks, weeks into months. The passage of time was marked not by the ticking of a clock, but by the relentless cycle of nature itself. The rhythm of the work, the relentless cycle of sunrise and sunset became Ethan's new reality. Each day brought new challenges but also new opportunities for growth and learning. His body, once soft and pampered, hardened under the unforgiving sun. The transformation was not just physical, but also mental and emotional. His hands, once used to the smooth surface of a data pad, became calloused and scarred. These hands now told a story of resilience and determination, a testament to his newfound strength. He learned to read the subtle shifts in the wind, the telltale signs of an approaching dust storm. This knowledge was crucial for survival, a skill honed through countless hours of observation and experience. He learned the value of water, each drop a precious commodity in this desolate world. The scarcity of resources taught him to appreciate the small things, to find joy in the simplest of moments. He learned the meaning of hard work, of pushing past exhaustion and finding strength in the face of adversity. Every task, no matter how small, became a lesson in perseverance and grit. Yet despite his transformation, the scars of alienation remained. Ethan struggled to find his place in a society that valued only success, feeling the weight of his past failures. His journey was one of transformation, a testament to the human spirit's ability to adapt and thrive in the harshest of conditions. Section 7, The Unforgiving Landscape. The Martian landscape, a canvas of rust and ochre, mirrored Ethan's internal struggle, stretching out before him as a testament to time and hardship. Towering mesas cast long shadows across the plains, their jagged peaks piercing the thin atmosphere, much like the obstacles Ethan faced. Craters, ancient wounds on the planet's surface whispered tales of a violent past, echoing Ethan's own scars. He began to see the beauty in the desolation, the stark grandeur of a world untouched by human hands, much like his own journey of isolation. The silence, once deafening, became a source of solace, a space for reflection and introspection, as he navigated a world that seemed determined to leave him behind. He was no longer the scared, fragile boy who had crumbled under pressure, an outcast struggling to find his place. He was changing, adapting, becoming something new, something stronger, ready to face the unforgiving landscape of his life. Section 8. Finding Strength in Unity. His team, initially wary of the Academy reject, began to accept him, their gruff exteriors hiding hearts hardened by circumstance, not malice. They had all faced their own battles, their own struggles and in him, they saw a reflection of their own pasts. They taught him the importance of camaraderie, of relying on each other for survival in this harsh environment. It wasn't just about playing cricket, it was about forming bonds that could withstand the toughest of times. They shared their meager rations, their stories, their lives. Around the campfire, they would laugh, cry, and find solace in each other's company. These moments of vulnerability brought them closer together. He learned their names, Maya, the team leader, her eyes reflecting the wisdom of a life lived on the edge. Her leadership was not just about strategy, but about understanding each member's strengths and weaknesses. Jax, his face scarred by a near-fatal encounter with a rogue rover, his resilience and bravery were a source of inspiration for the entire team. Lena, her quiet strength a beacon in the darkest of times. She had a way of lifting everyone's spirits, even when the odds were stacked against them. They became his family, bound by the shared experience of surviving against all odds. In this unity, Ethan began to see a glimmer of hope. But the limited resources and relentless pressure of his society made it difficult to truly connect with others. Despite these challenges, they found strength, a collective power that made them more than just a team. They were a family, a unit that could face any challenge together, no matter how insurmountable it seemed. Section 9. Reclaiming His Narrative Ethan fought to overcome the alienation he felt, 
One day during a routine excavation he stumbled upon a vein of rare earth minerals, a discovery that could revolutionize Martian mining. His knowledge once deemed useless on the surface proved invaluable. He devised a new extraction method, increasing efficiency and minimizing risk. He was hailed a hero, his name whispered with respect amongst the miners. The academy, once a symbol of his failure, now sought his expertise. In a performance-driven society, every step forward was a battle. He had proven himself, not within the sterile confines of a classroom, but in the crucible of the Martian surface. He had found his purpose, his redemption in the most unexpected of places. Section 10, Beyond the Horizon. Years later, Ethan stood on the edge of the mining pit, the setting sun bathing the landscape in a fiery glow. He was no longer the scared boy who had arrived broken and defeated. He was a survivor, a leader, a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity. He looked up at the sky, the stars a million pinpricks of light in the endless expanse. Beyond the horizon, Ethan saw a future where he could redefine success on his own terms. But the journey was long, and the limited resources available made it a constant struggle. He had found peace, not in the pursuit of perfection, but in the acceptance of his own imperfections. Section 11, A Testament to the Human Spirit. Ethan's journey was one of resilience and determination. Despite the alienation and limited resources, he found a way to persevere. His story echoed across the Red Plains, a beacon of hope and resilience. It reminded everyone that greatness wasn't found in sterile classrooms or under suffocating pressure, but in the dirt, sweat, and shared struggles of rebuilding a world. It was a testament to the human spirit, its ability to break, to heal, and to rise again stronger and wiser from the ashes of failure.